Hi, welcome to the series where I go through the ITIL4 practices individually and give you the main headline points that you need to be aware of to help you support your base knowledge all around ITIL4. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click on the bell, you'll get the notifications. Okay, so let's get to it. Today I'm going to be covering off something called organisational change management, which is part of the general management practices. So a practice is a set of organisational resources designed for performing work or accomplishing an objective. Organisational change management is from the general management practice and it's important to differentiate it from change control, which is in the service management practice. I'll cover that off on, on another session. I'll do a session about change control. First thing to get your head around is the purpose of organisational change management, OCM. ITIL 4 says the purpose of organisational change management is to ensure changes in an organisation are smoothly and successfully implemented and that lasting benefits are achieved by managing the human, emphasis on the word human, aspects of the changes. Slight aside, a few years back, the, the definition of this was around concerning with people side of change and that the structured approach, making sure that the improvements are implemented smoothly and successfully for lasting benefit. So as, as I talk through organisational change management, just a bit of context really, I'm coming from a place of real world experience. So I've written some notes down thinking through of a a previous assignment I was on where there was an element of execution of an organisational change management. So things to consider, first off is change can be challenging, there's always a resistance element. I don't think I've come across a change situation where there, there's been uh, no resistance whatsoever. There's always a resistance element. Why change? People generally like to know what they're doing, if something's changing, if it's if it's new, if it's the unknown, there's always going to be a bit of a, an instinctive resistance there. You will come across people that will say, it's not going to work, it's not worth it, what's the benefit of it? I don't see any benefit to it personally. And they're obviously looking at their own individual world. It's much riskier than the current state. They don't understand the need for it. Um, you know what we've looked at this before and it didn't work so anything around changing of ways of working particular the example I'm, I'm thinking through was a global organization so there were lots of moving parts in terms of different cultures there as well an important point around service providers here you need to bring service providers along on your journey but remember if you did a racy matrix which hopefully you did when you're looking at organizational change management you can't assign a service provider to be accountable for organisation change management. It needs to come from, from internal. So other areas to consider would be around the processes, role changes, technology usage, change of services. The other point in terms of real world experience for, for organisational change management and ITIL4 here is there are going to be other practices you need to be aware of that are most likely to be involved in. So CI, uh, continual improvement, project management, measurement, reporting, workforce, talent management, relationship management, those practices that, that there's gonna be other elements to, to OCM you need to take into account. You want to ensure and establish, but not only that, you want to maintain four things on your organisational change management journey if you plan on it actually working and if you plan on it ultimately delivering. Without these four things, you are on a long journey to absolutely nowhere. And the first one is clear and re relevant objectives. So make sure to gain that support, the objectives of the change, it's got to be clear, it's got to make sense to stakeholders. It also has to be based on the content, the context of the organisation you're operating in. So the context is so important. What's, what the context is from one organisation is going to be different in a completely different organisation or a different sector, a different environment. So context is key. It, it's got to be seen as adding value. The second 
point you need to establish, the second point you need to maintain is around strong and committed leadership. You need senior sponsors, you need people that will advocate this change, that they need to be leaders, they need to be visibly present, you need to be able to demonstrate that they are on board with this message and, and this change and that they're committed to change. So it's, it's critical that the change has the active support of sponsors and the day-to-day -day leaders within the organisations. Sponsor usually is a manager or someone who's in, in your organisation structure is, is seen as, as senior, a leader, and you need those people to be your advocate. You need those people that they've got the authority, they can authorise this change. And as, as I say, they need to be visible. You need, that you need them to visibly show support for this change and um, the communication and their commitment of that change. The third item you must establish and you must maintain is around willingness and uh, participants being prepared. To be successful, a change needs to be made by willing participants. In part, this willingness will come from the participants being convinced of the importance of the change in the first place, of course. So in addition, the more prepared people are, the more prepared participants are, the more that they feel that they are making the change that they've been asked to, that through things like training, awareness, comms, the more enthusiastic you will find people are, the keener they will be to go forward. And then the fourth item that you absolutely must make sure you establish and maintain is around sustained improvement. Many changes fail. Just be aware of that. Many changes do actually fail. After some time has passed, people revert to old ways of working. And I've seen this happen in lots of organisations. Organisational change management comes about and it, it's not maintained. So you've, you've done the establishment element of it, but it's not being maintained. So time has, has a, a funny way of pushing people back to old ways of working. People may say, oh, this doesn't work. We're going to do it the old way. It was so much better. So many changes fail because after some time has passed, people revert to old ways of working. Organisational change management seeks to continually reinforce the value of the change through regular communications, addressing any impacts and any consequences of that change and support of sponsors and leaders again that point around sponsorship and leadership. Make sure you get high level visual um, buy-in and enforcement from your sponsors, from, the, from those leaders. Communication of a value will be stronger when metrics are used as well. And I've, I've recorded a, a previous video around metrics and, and reporting that I'd encourage you to, to take a look at. But the metrics point is really important. Looking at things like your continual improvement, part of that activity was make a baseline. Where are you starting from? Point of that is obviously to assess the as is situation, but also if you then put a change in place, you need to be able to demonstrate that things are now better. So metrics you can use those to validate your, your message. A quick point around organisational change management and the service value chain. So OCMs involved in all value chain activities. Quick refresher, the way I always remember it is PIDOD. So the value chain is part of the service value system. Service value system has guiding principles, governance, service value chain right at the mid right in the middle. You've got practices and continual improvement all leading into that value to your to your stakeholders. But the, the way I remember the service value chain activities is pied on. So you've got planning, improvement, you've got engagement, and then the dod part is design and transition, the obtaining and the building, and then the delivery and support. 
ending up in a product or a service of some kind which then goes on to to deliver value so in that list of activities OCM is involved in all of those activities but very much improve element um, typically the, I mean if you think about it it's especially improvers without proper organization or change management you've got no chance of sustaining it so if we just look through some of the organizational change management activities we've got create a sense of urgency stakeholder management sponsor management communications empowerment resistance management and reinforcement I'll, I'll just go through a few of those perhaps and then unpack them a little so create of sense of urgency you need to get buy-in you need to set your stall out so to speak with your objectives what we're going to do what we are going to do not we plan not what we're thinking of doing not what we're planning to do what are we going to do you need to get that buy-in we're going to deliver this by when we are going to do that not some distant time in the future not sort of a vague time is it going to be we're thinking next year, maybe the year after that, or actually, no, maybe the year year after that. Now, make sure you've got that sense of urgency. Set your stall out with objectives. Stakeholder management, I've mentioned it a few times. You need to have strong people. You need to have people that are committed to making this change happen. But not only that, they, they need to be senior business leaders. You need business stakeholders in there. And likewise for sponsorship management as well, you need proper high level sponsorship for organisational change management, otherwise it will fail. Communication, keep communicating, keep communicating, keep communicating, keep communicating. How will you deliver that message? How often? What about the frequency? What's your approach? Are people prepared to contribute? I mentioned it earlier as well around other ITIL practices, really be aware that are you looking at the ITIL practices around continual improvement, around project management, around measurement and reporting? What about workforce and talent management? What about relationship management? Just make sure those lines of communication are, are open, making sure people are empowered resistance management there there will be people that will be resistant to change why do it why bother we've looked at this before and it didn't work need need to address that those those objections and and they need to be managed you need to get those people and engage those people so so they're they're on board and that they're not derailing the the activity and then reinforcement of them of the message keep reinforcing don't drop the momentum, keep that, that message being reinforced. And then a final summary thought and, and reflection, again from experience here, is that it's really important to get to that acceptance and support point in, in whatever that changes. You need to get people to accept it. You, people need to buy into this change. It's so important to have senior sponsorship senior stakeholders in there buying into into the organizational change management and then just keep your eyes on the target keep it going keep the momentum going communication and then the, fi the final point I'll, I'll say is do consider other change mon models in practice I, I've, I've used the ADCAR um, approach where where there are various elements you've got an enablement zone you've got an engagement zone so Things like awareness, make sure people, so ADCAR stands for awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, reinforcement. It's a helpful model to consider for organisational change management. So awareness, making sure the, the change is announced. No point in saying, by the way, we're doing this and it's going to be done by the end of the week. People need time to digest changes. So make sure it's, it's announced well ahead of time. Um, explain the reasoning, why are we doing this, what are those pain points, perhaps there's a value proposition in there, perhaps there's an element of return on investment. Um, and also get, time gives people, not only 
pe uh, the people the, the time to kind of digest it, but also to ask questions and maybe some people have, have other suggestions as well. So the, the awareness point, the desire bit, again, this is about gauging reactions to, to the change. Are there people that are vehemently against this change and will try and derail it? Or other people that are, yeah, yeah, we definitely need to do this. I, I, I'm on board board with that. And people are different. People address their their worries or their concerns in in different ways, and personality comes into that. Knowledge elements about the training, coaching, addressing skills, ability is uh, uh, scheduling practice runs before the change is implemented. Looking at the performance. Making, looking at constructive feedback as well, and then any any adjustments and the reinforcement bit. So the, the last two are the engagement zone. It's about monitoring changes over time and is it achieving that desired outcome. So in summary, get to that acceptance and support point as quickly as you can. Get buy into your change. Make sure you've got senior sponsors, sponsorship and and senior buy in and. Uh, um, that's the end of my overview around organisational change management. Thank you.